Saturday morning guys. I'm just out here in the woods, just on a lovely, lovely spring March morning. It's glorious, we're actually blessed over here in the UK, it's about 18 degrees at the moment. And uh, I'm out here today just having a little forage, looking around at all the wild food starting to sprout up, enjoying the wildlife and uh, doing a little bit of practice for something that I'm working on. Um, and that's my deer stalking certificate, so the DSC1 over here in the UK. And what that aims to achieve is to educate people who want to go out and stalk deer like myself and provide food or introduce it into the food chain. Um, so I thought I'd come out here today and have a little look and a stalk around the woodland and just practice some of those skills. Now I did just find this lovely, lovely bit of antler, which is really strange because uh, deer, especially like this, don't frequent this wood, although there are a few escapees from local deer park, so that's really cool to find. It obviously could be brought in from a, by a person or a dog, but I really highly doubt that. It was quite buried. I only just tripped over it next to some deer droppings when I spotted them. But yeah, again, really nice to find. I'm just going to put this in my bag and probably use that for some flint napping bits because that's a really nice soft striker, soft hammer, and there's some good pressure points there and even some material there for buttons. So I'm going to put that in the back of my backpack and in here I've actually got my deer stalking manual because while I'm out I'm going to be doing a little bit of revision because that's really, really important. Now this might just look like another kind of patch of green to uh, most of the untrained eye. But what we've actually got here is Allium triquetrum, or three-cornered leek. Um, there's loads and loads of bluebell around as well. So loads of lookalikes, lords and ladies. There's young ones of those around. Um, the snowdrops, bluebells, everything. Um, and it's all really green growth. So it's really good to come out and do a bit of ID. And uh, while I was coming into the woods, I noticed these. And of course, I do a lot of sausage making, so this is a perfect wild ingredient for me. So I'm actually gonna pick up a few of these leaves. I'll just cut a few at the bottom and harvest some as a fresh green for my next batch of sausages. So I'll probably do like a pork, sage, and wild garlic or just a pork and wild garlic, that could be really nice. And obviously this is a wild garlic, like I said, Allium trichretrum. Trichretrum mean tri and uh, the corners, so there's a triangular corner structure to it. And that is the main flowering shoot. Obviously at the moment we don't really have any of them, we've just got a lot of leaf foliage, which is trying to break through and get all of that energy from the sun to produce its really nice flowers, which look like these kind of exploding bells. Really, really nice. But I'll bring you in and show you these leaves. They've got a raised keel on the back and they're really, really waxy. And of course, when you do break them, they smell very distinctly and you can crush them in between your fingers. Of onion, right at the moment, it's a really nice spring onion kind of smell. And this is why it's gonna be perfect for a nice batch of pork sausages. Hmm. Really nice. Really tender flavour at this time. It's delicate. It's not overpowering. Later in the year, they can get really quite strong. And obviously, we don't have a very big season for these. Um, it doesn't last very long. And it's a very common and favourite of foragers. So it's good to get here nice and early and get a little bit. So I've just got these clear bags and I'm just going to harvest just a small amount, I'm not going to go mad. I'm only doing a small amount of sausages at the end of the day and I can come back here as many times as I need. So I'm just going to harvest a small kind of bunch, nice handful um, off of different plants. I'm not just going to wreck one and yeah, look forward to it. 
And if you want me to share how to make sausages, do let me know. I've had it requested a few times. But um, yeah, let's get some momentum on that and tell me what flavours you want to see me make or if it's just how to and simple pork sausages with my kind of spice mix. It's really important when you're foraging like this that you make sure you look down below at what you're getting. So if you just willy-nilly went and yanked that, you'd actually have this in here. And you, although it might not be poisonous, it'd just be an unnecessary flavour. So I've got about enough there. Like I said, I'm only taking a small handful because you don't need a lot when you're seasoning sausages and that would be a really nice fresh spring green flavour to add. So right next to this three-cornered leek there's a digitalis, another prime example of why you want to be careful harvesting. You wouldn't want to grab in there, yank up and then think that's good. And in there again there's bigger leaves like that which could easily be bluebell. So well worth checking out. Luckily like I said before, they've got that raised keel on the back, which makes it really, really simple to identify when you're mixed in with a load of longer leaves foliage. I absolutely love spring, as I'm sure all of you guys do. Um, it's one of my favourite times to be out in the woods, although I love being out at all times of the year. Um, you don't want to miss half of your life because you only go out in summer. I'm actually at the moment just following a nice trail created by some muntjac, so I'll show you some of the footprints in a minute. Um, their cloven hoof make a really identifiable small footprint in the clay here. And it's just really, really gorgeous. Um, I know a lot of people have been um, struggling over these last two years. And I think it's really important to come out and do stuff like this and also to share your, uh, share your issues, you know, share your problems. Um, a problem shared is a problem halved. And I can only speak on my behalf, and I know there's many other people out there who it probably applies to, but I'm, I'm always, always, so if any of you are ever struggling, please do drop me a message on Instagram or on Facebook or even a comment on YouTube. I'd be more than happy to spend some time talking to you, and uh, yeah. So some prime signs of deer tracks guys, you can see their cloven hoof details here. Now this looks a little bit too big to be a muntjac, but I might be corrected. Just because it's in wet mud it might have pushed. So I've been following these small little tracks all the way through the woods. A lot of deer tracks 
droppings and prints and they come to what looks like a kind of scrape area, like a bedding area. All the grass seems to be really flattened here and I'm surrounded by bracken and brambles everywhere and there's this long grass. Now I'm sure if we look hard enough we might find some hair which will indicate that deer have been laying here. So guys, there's some really, really fresh droppings here. It's a little bit hard to see just because of the sun. And also some fresh droppings here, and there's the hair that I've been looking for. Really hard to spot. But there's two distinct hairs right there. Now one way to tell that it's deer hair is that it's quite brittle, so when you bend it, it really bends on the kind of right angle of kinks. So um, yeah, really light at the tips, at the root, and go into a kind of sandy brown. So it definitely looks like munt jacket, especially with this kind of small droppings that are kind of pronounced on one end, kind of pointed at one end, oval shapes. So there we have the two indications, guys. The really small droppings and the deer hair right there. You can see what I mean by it kinking. So it's good to know where that little resting spot is so I could stake out somewhere similar at night and try to get a glimpse. But I'm gonna have to be really quiet now and what I'm gonna do is find myself a nice shaded area with my back up against a tree and I'll try calling them in and if I don't see any that's okay they're quite elusive anyway but still it's so good for the mind so here's a plant that I don't find too often in my woodland um, so it's really nice to come across this little hidden patch and that is cattail um, sometimes referred to as bulrush which is completely wrong but it's uh, Reed mace is its actual plant name and you can see these seeds are going absolutely everywhere so I'm happy to spread some of these considering it's already wild. Um, this is a wetland plant and it's got so many uses. Good fire lighter at the tip here, good insulator for clothing, good wood for friction fire for a hand drill and the rhizome, the root is edible as are the new shoots. Um, so yeah, really glad to have found this and probably in the future I'll come back and do a little video on collection and eating these roots. I've eaten a fair few in my time, but it'd be good to share it with you guys. So I'm just sat on a really nice fallen spruce at the moment and thought I'd take this as a little opportunity to show you my binoculars and my little binocular harness what goes on the chest and it's made by decathlon it's got little pockets in the side which I use to carry my little cherry whistle for calling in munt jack it's got a little valve on the top so you can adjust the pitch and you can adjust that as well by opening and closing your hand that's how I get the core Now, obviously I should be a little bit quieter, but I've got to get my audio on the mic. I've had these for ages. These are some Viking 10x42 binoculars, and they're really good for this kind of woodland kind of stalking environment. Um, 
And yeah, it's just nice to take a little perch on something solid. Obviously I'm quite silhouetted at the moment, so I'll be moving from here. But I couldn't resist sitting down for a few minutes and uh, discussing this. I've got this little Napier bottle in here with a little scent powder. So you can see that's going behind me. And I'm looking this way for all the kind of deer and the muntjac. I haven't seen any yet. But stuff like this is so good for the mental health. And uh, it's one of the reasons I wanted to come out today, was to promote doing stuff like this for mental health. So maybe we could all start a little movement together called Forage for Freedom. And uh, in that respect, it's freedom of the mind. Um, going out and enjoying your local woodland, your local area of beauty and uh, nature. And try and find some of your favourite edibles or your favourite plants to use. Some of your favourite materials, some of your favourite insects, birds, wildlife anything flora and fauna um go out and tag me in it add the hashtag and uh who knows when i get to 5,000 subscribers maybe i'll pick the best one and uh invite the lucky winner to come do a little camp with me or if they're too far away and that's not possible i'll sort them out with a little gift from myself um but it was really important to me and it would mean a hell of a lot because i've had a really close mate who's been struggling a lot lately. Um, in fact, a few of my mates have been struggling a lot lately. As, um, to be honest, have I. Uh, mental health's a little bit of a taboo thing to talk about, but it shouldn't be. Um, it's really important that we all stick together. Um, and I think it's maybe something nice to do and we can all share it together and I can go out and see what you guys have been doing and um, little things that I might not have seen. Um, and I'll do the same. I'll keep hosting little forage for freedom things i think it just could be a really awesome little movement um mental health is a really big thing i've struggled with it in the past um it was not so many years ago i had a really bad accident and i'm still picking myself up from that um and other people as well who have contacted me out of the blue saying just how much my channel has helped them and i want that to continue um so if i can do anything to help any of you guys always send me a message if you're feeling down and i'll do my best to reply to you because um, you guys are awesome and thanks for tuning in um, but I digress enough and I'm gonna have to change spot and get a little bit um, a little bit quieter if I want any chance of seeing some of these muntjac for my forage for freedom video so um, yeah let's not let that be a flop and I'll catch up with you very soon So I've just put on this face shroud and these gloves just to cover up as much as my pale skin as I can. Muntjac and all species of deer have a really acute sense of sight, smell and hearing. They can actually monitor two sounds from different directions simultaneously. You shouldn't really wear anything blue. So in terms of me, I'm all good. Blue is a really standout colour to deer, so greens and natural tones like this that break up the shape are really good. I'm also sitting downwind. I was just checking with my napier and the wind's drifting behind me. I'm going to sit here for 10 or so minutes and call in every now and again with my cherry whistle and just see if I can get some muntjac to come in because what I'd love to show is just some of the features for identification for yourself and also for me to reinforce all this learning that I've been doing. I've also been flicking through my manual and there's the dreaded blue but I've also been going through this, which is the sixth edition of the Deer Stalking Training Manual. Um, really, really good, and it's from the BDS, the British Deer Society. So it's just been really nice to be out here researching. 
but because I've made a little bit of a racket here, I'm going to pick up my little wax canvas seat that I've got my Browns Bushcraft sitting pad, kneeling pad, and I'm going to walk a few hundred yards in that direction and find another similar nice tree to rest my back up against. So I'm going to stalk him really carefully and we'll catch up with you there. So these are really handy little dog squeakers. You can buy them in a 10 pack and they work really, really well for deer calls. Well, the wind just changed there and uh, scared away that munchak buck, which was who, who was just over there. Um, probably 15 yards, 
I've actually got a rangefinder on me, but I was so busy filming and trying to pull focus through all the foliage, um, which I'd got just at the end as the wind changed and I felt it hit my neck and uh, that's why I was rushing to get focus and you could see him um, smelling around and bucking up. Um, so yeah, absolutely awesome. So I'll show you this rangefinder that I got. Um, you could hear him barking afterwards. That was his alarm call. Um, yeah, really, really cool. He was a monster, monster buck. Um, I was trying to whisper and say that you should look for the pedicles um, and that diamond shape on his head. So his pedicles are where the antlers form, the bone kind of structure on the skull. So the antlers come out of that and those were really prominent. He was a monster. So yeah, I've got this rangefinder from um, Cobra and it's the Insight 120. Um, so it's good up to about 200 yards. Um, I think 120 actually, but in optimal conditions it can go a little bit further. And it just uses a laser to sight in. So you look through the viewfinder, it doesn't have any magnification and it tells you the meters or the yards, so I'll find in meters. Seventeen point five meters away that buck was. Um, so yeah. Not far at all. And if I wasn't filming, I'm sure I could have called him in a little bit closer. Um, but that would have been perfect kind of territory for a shot. Really good, safe space, good backstop. Um, the earth just carries on up here. And there's a little kind of mound behind him, so that would have been perfect. And even more so for bow hunting, if we were allowed to do that over here in the UK. I'd love to get to the continent or over to the States to do that one day. But yeah, really, really handy little bit of um, kit. So I'll show you a little example. This one can go as close as four yards. So 8.3 meters away. And it shows you on the display and on a kind of view, on the viewfinder, it shows it you on there. So when you're looking through, you can see it. But yeah, I'm glad to have found that buck and called him in using this little cherry whistle. Um, and I also used the little dog squeaker just to grab his attention when he was starting to head down a little bit. Um, but yeah, I'm going to move on from here now. Like I said, the wind's completely changed and it's a really still day, so it kind of keeps swirling around. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing that really, really lovely munchak buck. Obviously, they're invasive over here in the UK. They don't have a breeding season. And they were introduced by the Duke of Bedford. Um, who wasn't too far away from me. So a lot of them escaped around this area and have just prolificated all around the UK. Um, so yeah, there's no close or open season on those. Obviously you have to have permission if you're gonna do deer stalking. Um, but yeah, really, really nice to call in and just to see how they respond to the calls. Um, that kind of mimics a young fawn. Um, and yeah, just good practice for my DSC one. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. And don't forget to do your forage for freedom. And again, it's freedom of the mind, not freedom as in um, being outdoors. Although that's one of the best ways to clear your head. So really another cool feature about muntjac deer that I was trying to capture while I was filming um, and I think I did, there's probably a little glimpse of it that you can just see when I get his face in focus is actually the glands just here below the eyes, the suborbital glands. They're really unique to a muntjac, really distinguished and uh, yeah just something really cool. I was so glad I saw that buck, um, so yeah just another little something. Just really enjoying learning about it at the moment. It's been something that I've wanted to do for a while. Obviously I did my Chinese water deer stalk and subsequent muntjac stalks with Childerly Sporting. Um, and that's, they've been awesome. But I just want to be able to get out a little bit more and uh, yeah, learn about the animal that I'm so 
deeply interested about. So uh, it's been a really good experience today. Thanks so much for joining me. And until next time, stay safe, keep that mind free, and uh, yeah, see you soon. <laughs>